I am so excited today because we are at Ruby and Rose's dye studio in Lafayette, Indiana. We're getting a behind the scenes look at how Addie dyes her yarn. Plus we get to see so many beautiful colors. So let's just head right inside. I'm here with Addie, who is the artist and owner of Ruby and Roses, and she's gonna give us a tour of her space. Hey everyone, my name is Addie. I am the artist and owner behind Ruby and Roses Yarn, like Natalie said, and I'm super excited to take you guys along for a dye studio tour. So this is like the main room of the studio where all of the packaging, labeling, sorting happens. So this wall right here is where we feature all of our best-selling colorways. So this section in particular is my Yarnary Islands collection, which is um, just inspired by the Canary Islands. So this is like our newest collection. And then over here we have a lot of our tried and true bestsellers. Um, a fun one that I'm sort of known for, I guess, is my Weasley's Wizard Weezes colorway, which features a lot of neons, but it's subdued slightly, which is fun. And then, yeah, these are just a lot more of our other colorways. We've sort of organized it by color. So it is organized by what kind of colors coordinate the best together as opposed to by base. So it's a really fun thing to do. And then we also have a bit of advent prep happening already, even though it's August. So we definitely get a head start on that. And yeah, this is a colorway that will be launching in my 2023 fall collection. So a little sneak peek for you guys here. I haven't really even shared it on my own Instagram account yet. So speaking of bases, we have a total of 11 bases. We are continually adding in new favorites. Um, a really fun one that's brand new to the shop is our bulky weight base, which is a two ply, super great for those weekend knits. I have um, a lot of different bases, all from lace weight, like I said, to bulky. Several of them are mohair and surrey. Others are all merino and silk and a nylon, of course. So my best selling base is my soft rose base, which is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. Great for socks, great for all sorts of things. And yeah, this is sort of the wall. This is kind of where it stops. And then over here, we have a lot of our overflow colors. So extra bases and things that we couldn't really fit on the wall. And then a little bit of sail yarn, which is just kind of our prototype colorways. And then my fall collection of 2022, which was my letter writer inspired collection. So this is sort of a general overview of all the yarn we have in the shop. <laughs> Over here at this section of the studio is where we keep all of our featured products. So my personal favorite colorways and sock sets and ones that all of my customers really love as well, which is fun. For instance, these sock sets are part of my Yarnary Islands collection, which is just one of my all time favorite collections. I love how each and every colorway turned out. So we have um, just a lot of just different colors. Here's one that's one of my favorite colors because it's pink. <laughs> and this is Creative Liberty. We have some that are almost sold out because I will be restocking those. Um, here's one that I'm also really excited about because it's coming with my fall collection. So a little teaser there. Um, I'll be filling up the rest of these shelves with 
all of the sock sets. I also have a few 10 gram mini skein collections that I love to do just to kind of just get uh, more creative juices flowing and just kind of, it's just great for cleanser projects for me. And then, um, yeah, I have a lot of other different sets. This one is super fun, just like a 10 gram mini skein set. And yeah, that's pretty much all of the all of the sock sets and mini skeins. I also have a few of my swatches up here. And this is just kind of a wall filled with all the inspiration. So before I take you guys into the back of the dye studio, I thought it would be fun to take you through the start of the process where it all starts with undyed skeins. So if you follow me into the undyed yarn room, we have everything sorted by base. And this is where we grab it off of the wall and tie it. So I'll go ahead and tie up a skein to show you guys. So I use pink ties for all of my colorways before I take them into the dye studio, except for my rose sport base, because sport weight is a colorway that, or a base that's a little bit hard to uh, figure out what it is without the label. So now we'll take this back into the dye studio and I will show you the next part of the process. So I'll take the yarn and I will put it in one of these pans. So as you can see, we have quite the tower of pans back here, as well as like wool wash and other items. So once I take it onto the dye table, I will add in a specific water level as well as a specific acid ratio, depending on what colorway I'm dyeing. And I also have quite a few dye recipe books, <laughs> as you can see. Got a lot of different notes depending on if it's a speckled colorway, if it's a tonal colorway, or if it's a colorway that's like this one that I call my watercolor effect. As you can see, a lot of the speckles are a lot more like blurred together, and I think it gives the effect of a watercolor painting. So this is obviously not exactly what it looks like because I don't have any water or acid in the pan, but I will lay my skeins in in a particular way that makes it dye as evenly as possible. And here are my acid dyes. These are actually some dyes that actually go into the making of this colorway. And I thought it would be fun to kind of show you the difference of the dye powder. I don't have a mask on currently, so I'm not going to actually be showing the dyes up close, but just kind of a general idea of what they look like because I think looking at the consistencies can be super helpful in imagining what the dye process looks like. And this is my neon green. So as you can see, even the neons look extremely dark. And I think it's super fun to see the transformation of what dye looks like from powder to adhering onto the yarn because it's just so magical to see how it adheres differently. So after I've applied all my dyes into my pan, I will take it over to my oven. So I just got a second oven and it makes it really great so I can dye up even more skeins per day. So I actually have this one running currently. I just have a few skeins in there. That's actually a collaboration between uh, Natalie and me for her members, which is super fun. But I'll go ahead and put this in my oven and I'll let it cook overnight just to make sure that all of the dye has absorbed and reacted to the yarn. After it has been cooked in the oven for overnight, we will take it out and make a big stack of pans all up here. And we will fill up both basins filled with water and then we'll add in our wool wash, which we keep over here. Um, we currently have um, quite a few gallons of that. So we'll just go ahead and wash the yarn for 20 minutes. And then after that, we spin it out in our spin dryers. And then once it's spun out, I'll just kind of take this since it's our example skein and I will show you what it looks like on the drying racks. So after that, we'll take it out here and put it on the racks, just like that and let it dry for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. So it's black and white because we can't show the yarn that's over here because it is Advents. So these are Advents that have not been packaged up yet. So a little teaser there. And there's a few left in the shop. The link will be down below if you wanna check it out for this Christmas season. So now I'm going to take you through the process of what it looks like winding a skein. So over here is our winding corner where all of the yarn comes off the racks and then it's wound into pretty skeins. And then we take it over here and label it. So at this desk over here is where we label all of the colorways. As you can see, all of our 11 um, base labels are all ready to go. So we will just put these around the skeins and then staple them with really pretty rose gold staples. Yeah. 
these bags right here, we're actually stamping them for our very first in-person vending event. We will be at the Pittsburgh uh, State Yarn Festival, so that'll be super fun in a few weeks. Now that you've gotten to see all around the studio, we're going to sit down and get to know Addie a little bit more. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Addie, like she said, and I am located in Lafayette, Indiana. I've been here for a little over a year. I was originally from Missouri where I started dyeing all the yarn. I've been married for about like six months now, so that's the reason why I moved to Lafayette. But yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> so wait, how did you get started into dyeing? Because you have a pretty cool story about, I just feel like starting out so young, like you were in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my fiber story is actually even a little bit before that as well. I taught myself how to crochet on YouTube when I was eight, just because I saw one of my friends just chaining. She would just crochet chain always. I don't know what she was making, but that was just kind of what she did. And I thought it was super cool. She taught me how to do it. And I just started crocheting and just kind of went from there and learned how to knit at 10. And then I got into dyeing when I was like 15. <laughs> does anyone in your family knit or crochet? Mm -mm, no, no one, no one does any of the fiber arts. My, my grandma and my great grandmother are very creative. Um, and my mom's actually an interior designer. So I sort of grew up around like art, I guess, but nothing like related to the fiber arts. That's wild. You could just mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> came into it on your own with your yeah. own interests. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, amazing. I really loved like, the idea of just doing handwork, I guess. I just thought it was just really fun and I really fell in love with crochet. And then I actually wanted to figure out how I could like start selling my things because I thought it would be really fun and I was always kind of like entrepreneurial, I guess. So I just started selling my like crocheted items and knitted items at farmer's markets that were like local to my town. And then I just also got into pottery a little bit later on and just did like really random stuff as a kid, but it was kind of fun. Oh my gosh. I just thought of something that mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't know the story behind the name Ruby and Roses. Mm -hmm. Does that have like any significant meaning to you or some like how did you pick that name? Yeah, well, it's actually really special because I've always loved the name Ruby because my great grandmother's name was Ruby and she is like just kind of just such an amazing lady. I've never met her personally because um, she died quite a few years before I was born, but I've heard so many stories about her through my grandmother and through my mom and she just has like so many fun things that she did like throughout her life because she was an incredible painter and just like super artistic and I feel like I sort of inherited my creative gene from her so I just loved hearing all the stories and just felt really connected to her I guess in a way and then I just wanted to name my company Ruby and Roses and I loved roses as well like when I was 16 so like I was obsessed with all things roses and flowers and things so that's just kind of two of my things that I was really passionate about at the time and just kind of put them together. <laughs> okay so you said 16 so is that when you started dying? or when you started making finished items. Walk so, us through the timeline. Of, gotcha. <laughs> how do we get yeah. to now? Mm -hmm. So I actually, so I started dyeing yarn when I was 15. And then when I was 16, I started like getting more comfortable with like um, just the dyeing process in general. And I actually didn't really want to start dyeing yarn like for, for business. I didn't really think about it that way, I guess. But I actually went to my first yarn festival when I was 16. It was Stitches West. And I got to meet like uh, Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn. Um, and then just, and her mom as well, uh, Christy of Yarn Cafe Creations, and then Molly of A Homespun House. And it was just really cool to get to meet all of them in real life and be like, I've watched them for so long and the community actually exists. <laughs> and it was just really fun. So I got to just meet them. And then Tristan actually was looking at some of the colorways that I was creating and said that I should open a business. And she's like, you could sell this on Etsy. And I was like, huh, I didn't really think about it that way. But just hearing like that vote of confidence, I guess, that she had in my work just really meant a lot. And it kind of just lit a fire in me, I guess, to just like want to do it. So I started dyeing yarn and then it became like kind of big, I guess. It just kind of grew faster than I thought. And I started filming a podcast, started an Instagram account. Um, and just started sharing what I was working on and the collections and colorways that I was coming out with. And it just like the like warm welcome I received was really amazing. So it's really amazing that you started out in your parents' house dyeing yarn. And now you're here in this amazing studio with so much yarn and such a big space. So what does your business like look like now? Like how is it different from when you were there 
in your parents' house <laughs> to like how you operate in 2023? Yeah, it's so different because I went from just work, working in my parents' house. So like I would dye yarn in the garage, take it up like two flights of stairs to the guest bedroom area where I just kind of took over my dad's office and just converted it into like a little studio. I had some grid wall that my mom helped me put up and I did all of my shipping, all of my like winding, um, skeining, like everything, like labeling. I did all of it in that room. And then for Advent, I would kind of go out into the library and I just kind of ended up just taking over the house and like the dining room was the undyed yarn room so just had so many like yeah they were really great to let me do that there for sure and then now I was able to kind of like I just remember when I got here it just felt like such a big space with a huge amount of growth opportunities because I had a lot of stock but I was able to just produce so much more and that was just a really special time for sure and then now I'm able to just yeah have a lot of um, not only just skeined yarn on the wall but the dye studio is also a lot more efficient I have actual tables that are like stainless steel so it just makes it super easy and yeah a lot of just new new changes <laughs> and are you still doing everything on your own or you have some people helping you out because this is a lot of yeah. yarn to do if this is all you. Yeah, I could not do it by myself for sure. Yeah, so I actually have two full-time employees that are amazing. One of them, Josie, is like just my right-hand girl. She's like always like around at the dye studio helping me wash yarn, helping me wash pans. She also dyes all of the beautiful tonals you see. So it's just really great to have to have her help as well. And then um, Emily's out front and she does all of the winding and she does the labeling and she's got amazing attention to detail. So she really kind of picks up on like all of the different nuances and bases, which is great. And just like, yeah, all the little things that you need to kind of keep doing with quality control that she's really good at so so yeah I have a team of them and then I also work alongside my husband full-time which is great so he just started in April and it's been super fun just getting to kind of do our business meetings throughout the day and just kind of chat about all the different things we're doing so I'm doing more of the obviously creating and all of the business side things that have to do with like the product and he does all of our like IT work all of the website things so a lot of like um, if there's like a problem with like my customers orders like he will handle a lot of that so just a lot more of the back-end business stuff that you wouldn't typically think about <laughs> we thought it would be really fun to show some projects so you can kind of see the yarn in action so I think we're gonna start with a sweater yeah, so this one I actually just cast on a few days ago and have been completely obsessed with it. It is the, I think, Lion Sweater by Petite Knit, and it's using my Sail Away colorway. Which is so pretty. I have the Rose Worsted mm -hmm. right here, so you can see what it looks like in the skein. So I really love how it's knitting up so far. It's super fun. It's going to be my Rhinebeck sweater this year and yeah, all the Rhinebeck stuff. <laughs> and then here's the swatch because I not only wanted to make sure I was getting gauged, but I also am going to be modifying the pattern to include this really pretty color work. And it's featuring some of my favorite tonals. I love how this looks. It's just kind of something I had in my mind at the time just to I've got them all there. here. <laughs> okay, so walk us through from, let's say, like right, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the side. Hold on, let me get them all in one, <laughs> <laughs> in one go here, so that we can see them. Okay, so gotcha. starting with this one. So that's anemone, mm -hmm. rosy cheeks, material girl. Love that. And Kana. <laughs> so pretty. I yeah. love it. It's wow. all, all the pinks. It's my favorite color, so I have to. Definitely put it in the Rhinebeck sweater. <laughs> yeah, and then I think this is the same the same mm -hmm. yarn that you're using in the main color, but in a, a fingering weight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually based off of a sock pattern by Dana Ray Makes. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. The Hearth socks. <laughs> and then that's the Material Girl with the yes, sail uh -huh. away. And then we added in a Latvian braid, which is super fun to kind of have those colorways play together. So this is my Cozy Memories blanket. I'll try to sh show it a little bit, but this one is super fun because I included so many different colors. I love a project where you can really kind of experiment with color a lot and just kind of create different color combos. So this one is not all of my yarn. It's some other colorways from some of my favorite dyers, but I really feel like this helped a lot with like my color theory over the years because I cast it on in 2020, right? During like all of the COVID stuff. So it's just has a lot of 
a lot of time into this blanket and this is just half of it. So I just finished cutting, cutting all those out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it would be really fun to mm -hmm. use because how many grams do you need for a square? So it's roughly like three to four grams. So a lot of people will use like my 10 gram sets mm -hmm. for Cozy Memories blankets. And I think it's super fun with, um, with all of these. So that one is actually all of the tonals that were featured in my Yarnary Islands collection. So it's perfect for spring and summer. It has a lot of really beautiful, bright colors. And it's called Yarnary Flight Number 3. <laughs> and how many minis are in this one? So that one has 12. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that one is a speckled version of like my 10 gram sets that I really love. I actually am going to be adding a few of them into another square on my Cozy Memories blanket because I just love how they turned out. It's my nightlife set. So fun. And you so. could totally do like at least maybe two pairs of socks here. Yeah. If you, because mm -hmm. I often don't need a full 100 grams for my socks. Mm -hmm. So you could like split them up and do two different things. Yeah. Or, or a can, muscle bro hat. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Or like a shawl or mm -hmm. something like that would be really pretty too. It would be amazing. Or color work on a sweater. Because mm -hmm. then you've already put together, you've done the hard work of putting together the colors. That's always hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fun. I love like doing, like looking at all of the color work patterns that are out there are super fun. Like all the different, all the different minis. So the last project I brought to share is my Deep Affection socks. So this is just a really fun colorway and it's actually my very first pair of socks. <laughs> Even though I've been knitting for years, I've never knit a pair of socks. Okay, <laughs> I thought when you said first, uh -huh. I thought you meant like in this color. Oh really? You, so this is your first pair of socks? <laughs> yes. What? It's, yeah, it's my very first pair. It's kind of crazy. It took me so long to cast on my first pair just because I've never really been interested in knitting socks. But after dyeing this colorway, I was so inspired. Like I feel like all of my projects are born out of like the colorways that I'm dyeing. So I'm always fascinated to hear from designers like how you get your color inspiration. So we've picked out a color that has a pretty mm -hmm. special story behind it. So how did you dye? Where did you get the color inspiration to dye this color? So what's really special about this colorway in particular, this is my streetcar colorway, and it's inspired by all of the beautiful cityscapes of Lisbon, Portugal. So it's just a really beautiful city. So we actually, my husband and I went there for our honeymoon, and it was like, uh, we went on a cruise. So it was the port city that we kind of like came from and then like arrived at at the end. And it was my favorite out of the entire trip. It was so beautiful. Really? Mm -hmm. The colors were insane. Cause like in wow. America, you don't have like a bright pink building just out and about. <laughs> so it was just really fun to see all the colors. So I'll go ahead and show you a close up. But believe it or not, all of these colors are based off of the, off of the cityscape. So all of the colors, like the orange in there is from all the different roofs. There's just a lot of really beautiful greens and yellows and all of the colors. So it's just really, really fun. And I've got some swatches here so you can see what it looks like. Knit up, it's so pretty. And then also this one in Tunisian crochet. It's beautiful. So then you pulled this really bright, fun color to go with it. Yeah, so what was really fun about just watching the, the scene and just getting to look at the everyday life was the fact that there were streetcars everywhere and they were just the prettiest shade of yellow and I wanted to kind of incorporate that into the variegated skein and then just kind of really pull that out for a coordinating tonal. So this is my static colorway. It's just a really beautiful neon yellow, slightly understated, <laughs> but also very bright. So the streetcars are actually this color? So they're a little bit more like orange, but I wanted to kind of create a yellow that was a little bit brighter. So I did take a bit of a creative liberty with that, but it still kind of, I think, keeps the integrity of the idea intact. And then I also wanted to just bring the scene to life even more with a charm by Katie of Lock and Lou. She just did such a beautiful job. Her attention to detail is, is amazing. So we've seen so much amazing yarn today. Um, tell us a little bit more about how, like, how we can make sure to get some of this beautiful stuff. Yeah, so I um, just like will launch collections and they're typically ready to ship, which is I think a really nice, not only for us as like and, and our team, but also for all of our customers because they can just purchase it and get it right away without having to wait several weeks. And it's just really fun to just dye up a ton of yarn and just get to add it into the shop. 
And what's like the next thing that's coming up? Because you were mentioning a sneak peek, really bright colorway. Mm -hmm. So what's coming? <laughs> So my fall collection is going to be pretty unique and really exciting. I'm going to be dyeing up a lot of one-of-a-kind sock sets and a few like tonals that are going to be new as well and just kind of a really like just small update that is just going to have a lot of fun colors. So I'm just going to kind of experiment with one-of-a-kinds and they tend to be my favorites because I can really just break the rules with yarn dyeing and come up with something really fun. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And then I'm also going to be dyeing up uh, September's monthly colorway for the rewards program that we have on the site. So that's something really fun to look forward to as well. <laughs> that's amazing. So we're going to have a special link down below that actually benefits both of us um, if you want to support us and both of the things that we're doing. And new customers actually get $5 off. So if you yeah, haven't really shopped, <laughs> if you haven't shopped with Addy before, I feel like how can you walk away <laughs> from this <laughs> not wanting to see something? Uh, Addie, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for giving us a behind the scenes look at everything and just thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for driving all the way down to see us. It's <laughs> like an amazing opportunity, super fun. <laughs> before this, we were in Southern Indiana mm -hmm. and we were in Kentucky right before that. And we're going to Illinois after this. So it was just like so worth it for us to come here and see you. <laughs> like it's just been absolutely amazing. Thank oh, you. Yeah, it's been super fun. Thank you guys too. <laughs>